Okay. Today, our, today our topic of discussion is layers of the eyeball and different structures of the eyeball. In this lecture, we will discuss the short introduction about the different structures of the eyeball and also the layers and cores of the eyeball. As you know, the eyeball has three different cores or three different layers. The first layer is called fibrous layer. The fiber layer of the eyeball, which is very first and very tough layer or core of the eyeball, consists of the two structures, which is very basic structure and very 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 important structure of the eyeball. The first structure is the cornea. And the cornea is, you know, the very transparent structure of the eyeball. And the second structure is called the whitish of the eyeball, which is called sclera. These two basic structures are the part of the fibrous layer of the eyeball. First, we will discuss about the cornea, the transparent one, the first one. If I draw a structure of the eyeball, this is a temporal view of the eyeball, this one. And the anterior most structure, which is transparent, that one is called the cornea, which is transparent and telling you over and over again. The transparent and the anterior most structure of the eyeball is called the cornea, right? Now, the cornea consists one by sixth part of the eyeball. It's one by sixth part of the eyeball as if I say, if I divide this whole eyeball in six different parts, the one part of the sixth part of the eyeball is the cornea. The cornea is a transparent structure, is very fragile, very delicate and very transparent structure, right? And uh, now we will discuss about uh, the diameter of the cornea. The diameter of the cornea is 11.5 millimeter. This is the diameter of the cornea. And if we talk about the thickness of the eyeball, sorry, the thickness of the cornea, suppose if I draw this, the bigger cornea, the thickness of the cornea is very from center to the periphery. The central portion of the cornea is less thicker as compared to the periphery of the cornea. So, the center of the cornea is, you can say, 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 millimeter thick. And if you move from center towards the periphery, the peripheral cornea is more thickened, you can say it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 millimeter. This is the thickness variation of the cornea. Now we will discuss about the power of the cornea. You know, the a big source of power, dioptric power is there in the eyeball and the major contribution of the dioptric power is cornea. The cornea contribute 43 diopters of the power, the total power of the eyeball and the total power of the eyeball is 58 diopters. This is the total power of the eyeball which is uh, contributed by the cornea and the next structure which is the crystal line lens which, uh, which we will discuss later. Now, the 43 diopter which is contributed by the cornea is very helpful to bend the light. Suppose if you can say if the light is coming from the medium, uh, suppose you can say if the light is coming from the air and when it penetrates the cornea, this 43 diopter power of the cornea will make this light, will make this light ray to bend on the sensitive layer of the retina, on the sensitive layer of the macula, which is the uh, most, which has the sharpest vision on the retina, which we will discuss later. So this 43 diopter power of the cornea will make this light to focus on the sensitive layer of the retina which is the most sensitive layer of the eyeball. This retina is the most sensitive layer of the retina, which we will discuss uh, for a while. So, the 43 diopter is contributed by the cornea. Now, we will discuss the different layers of the eyeball. So, yeah, different layers of the cornea. The first layer is called epithelium. Second one is Bowman's layer. The third one is 
is stromal layer or stroma of the cornea. Fourth one is decimus membrane, the D is silent. And the fifth and the last one is the one and only endothelium. These are different five structures of the eyeball and we will discuss it very precisely and in detail when we will discuss the precise lecture on cornea. So these are different at the layers of the cornea itself, the epithelium, the bone layer, stroma, and decimus membrane, and endothelium. Now, if you want to locate the cornea, if you can, uh, if I take the frontal view of the eyeball here, if I can zoom here on the, on the frontal surface of the eyeball, this is If you can zoom in my eyes, if I come closer to the camera, if you can zoom in my eyes, you can see, you can see a colorful structure in my eyeball, the colorful one, uh, it, a structure is as the whitish of the eyeball, I'm not talking about the whitish of the eyeball, the whitish of the eyeball is the sclera, I'm talking about the colorful structure, the roundish structure which is colorful is called iris, the colorful, I'm talking about the colorful structure which is called iris. And on the surface of the iris, on the anterior to the iris, there is a transparent layer which is called cornea, right? Now, we will discuss about the source of nutrition for the cornea because you know everyone needs nutrition to live his life. So, we will discuss two different sources of nutrition of the cornea. The first nutrition source for the cornea is air. As I told you, as I told you over and over again, that the cornea is the anterior most, the anterior most part of the eyeball. The cornea is the anterior most part of the eyeball. So I can say that the frontal surface of the cornea, you can say the anterior surface of the cornea is facing the air, is facing the atmosphere. So cornea has ability. The cornea has ability. Cornea has credibility to absorb the oxygen from the air to nutrition to nutrate itself. Right. So, the first source of nutrition for the cornea is the atmosphere or the air or the oxygen in the atmosphere or in the air. So, the epithelium of the cornea, which is the anterior most layer of the cornea, the epithelium is, has the ability to absorb the oxygen from the atmosphere or from the air. So, it is, this is the first, you can see, nutrition source for the cornea and we will discuss the second source of the nutrition of the cornea and that is aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is actually, this is a new word for you, for most of the people. As you, as the name implies, the aqueous humor is aqua, it's a water, it's a liquid. We will discuss its composition later in the further lecture. If I draw an eyeball here, So this is an eyeball and this is the first structure which is cornea, posterior to the cornea, you can say I can make a smaller structure of the eyeball, this is, you can say this is crystalline lens and here it is, the eyes which is a colorful structure, this one, this is all around the whole surface area of the eyeball, this iris, right? So. I am talking about the aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is actually a liquid. If it move, penetrate, you penetrate in the surface of the cornea from the anterior side, the liquid which is presenting here towards the posterior surface of the cornea. Here, this is posterior surface of the cornea. This one, if, if I can zoom here, this is posterior surface of the cornea, and this one is the anterior surface of the cornea. So, this surface and the anterior surface of the cornea, the posterior surface of the cornea and anterior surface of the crystalline lens. This is crystalline lens. So the liquid is present here between these two structures, the posterior surface of the cornea and anterior surface of the lens. So the liquid which is present over here in these structures, it is called aqueous humor. So we can say the aqueous humor is present 
in the posterior surface of the cornea so this is also a source of nutrition is the second source of nutrition for the cornea right the first source of nutrition is air which is coming from the outer atmosphere oxygen is coming from the outer atmosphere from the air as well or you can see that second source of nutrition for the cornea is the aqueous humor which is presenting which is present towards the posterior surface of the cornea so these aqueous humor and the air are the two source of nutrition for the cornea now we will discuss the uh, you can say the, uh, as i told you that cornea is totally a transparent structure so there is no any blood supply there is no any numb fats numb fats for the cornea so here it is uh, some brief introduction about the fibrous layer which was the first layer of the eyeball and we have discussed